In 1996, the government of Portugal issued a set of exquisite coins in commemoration of the discovery of Formosa, Taiwan. The coins were imprinted with 1582 for the year of the discovery. Why was 1582 designated the discovery year instead of the 1540s, the more commonly acknowledged date? A beautiful mistake, some questions yet to be explored. The Portuguese were the first to discover a new shipping route to East Asia for trade. They were also the first to discover Taiwan. How did they discover Taiwan? History textbooks and teachers would state the following. In the mid-16th century, 1543 or 1544, the Portuguese sailed past the coast of Taiwan. Looking at it from a distance, they saw mountains rising to a spectacular height and the beauty of the picturesque green forests. They screamed with jubilation, Ila Formosa, Ila Formosa. This island was nothing short of magnificent. Along the coast, cliffs rose to spectacular heights. Farther inland, the land was wild and untamed, but of astonishing beauty. So, what was the name of this ship or fleet? Who was the captain? Regrettably, Taiwan historians and scholars have searched all the historical documents and archives and found no answer. Some scholars therefore believe that this episode was based on inference or imagination. There was probably no such event at all. Macau and Japan were the focus of Portuguese trade interests. Taiwan was simply a scenic point in the middle of the shipping route. They never set foot on the island to explore. But the word Formosa, screamed by the Portuguese, became the beautiful name of Taiwan in the Western world. The July 1582 Shipwreck in Taiwan Although the current collections of Portuguese and Spanish navigation records cannot prove that screaming Ilha Formosa occurred, Scholars can conclude that earlier, the island of Formosa was actually called Little Liu Qiu. Initially, Formosa vaguely referred to some small nearby islands located north of Taiwan. It was not until the 1580s that the Spanish began to point out clearly that Formosa was Taiwan. Are there any other documents that prove the Portuguese praised the island's beauty and named it Formosa? Some scholars have suggested that direct proof could be a shipwreck that happened in 1582. A ship that sailed out from Macau in July 1582 encountered a typhoon and was shipwrecked several days later at some coastal location in Taiwan. The July 1582 shipwreck was not only recorded in many historical documents, but also was a major news story at the time. In fact, this shipwreck is a very important event in the history of Taiwan. The Portuguese, who sailed past Taiwan for nearly 40 years without ever paying attention to it, were forced to land on Taiwan this time. The shipwreck occurred 42 years before the Dutch took over Taiwan in 1624. The records about that shipwreck actually reflect certain important historical facts. The following description by three priests who were on board the ship provides a general picture of what happened. On July 6, 1582, the Portuguese authorities in Macau dispatched a cargo ship to sail for Japan. About 300 passengers and crew members were on board the ship. Among the passengers were five Spanish and Portuguese priests. Three of them wrote about what transpired to their fellow church members. In addition to Spanish and Portuguese people on board the ship, there were Chinese people, Manila natives, African slaves, and possibly some Japanese people. Several days after the ship left Macau, it encountered a typhoon, drifted at sea for three or four days, and finally landed on the desolate shore of Taiwan on the morning of July 16th. The survivors made arduous efforts to climb onto shore. They built straw cottages on nearby ground to wait for rescue.
but that location only had a small pond with poor water quality. So they moved about 2.5 kilometers to the shore of a freshwater river. Hoping to escape, they started to build a smaller sailboat with the scrapped wood from the wrecked ship. They also built temporary houses and a small church. The island's aboriginal inhabitants saw the shipwreck and came out to pick up the floating ship debris, such as clothes. At the beginning, the aboriginals tried to trade peacefully with the survivors, but fighting broke out soon after because of communication problems. This resulted in deaths and injuries on both sides. The shipwreck survivors were stranded for 75 days until the end of September. Construction of the sailboat large enough for about 300 people was finally completed by then. During the high tide on September 30th, they left Taiwan and returned to Macau. The location of the shipwreck. Where did this sailboat land? Some believed it was in southwest Taiwan. Others believed it was along the northwest coast of Taiwan. But there is no direct proof of where it landed. We can only conjecture the shipwreck's location based on the descriptions of the three priests. The survivors selected a small freshwater river 2.5 kilometers from the shipwreck location. There was a small bay near the river entrance that could be reached by the ocean tides. The records by the priests also described aboriginal inhabitants fishing in the river and deer hunting in the nearby forests. The so-called nearby forests were referred to as forests on the mountains. The location where the shipwreck survivors built temporary houses and the small ship was about five kilometers from the foothills of a mountain. In between was sand and gravel land. Rising mountain peaks could almost reach the clouds above. There were plenty of woods and large grassland areas in the mountain where deer would gather. The big and strong aboriginals hunted deer with spears. The priests even climbed to the top of the mountain to erect a large cross. The completed new sailboat was docked on the river shore, exposed to wind and rain. It was not blown away toward the sea, but to a location a little further away from the sea that could not be reached by big waves. This part of the records would exclude the area of Keelong as the shipwreck location. The Tomsui River is the only river in northern Taiwan where an empty sailboat large enough for about 300 people could be blown away a distance from the sea and then stopped. Furthermore, the distance between the temporary cottages and mountain foothills was about 5 kilometers. This would indicate that the location of those temporary lodgings was not on the left-hand side of the Tomsui River, because Mount Kuan Ying is immediately adjacent to the left bank of the river. In other words, the location of the 1582 shipwreck was possibly on the right bank of the Tomsui River. The mountains referenced in the records are probably Mount Datun and Mount Chi Sing. The scenes of trade by the aboriginals described in the records is consistent with the economic activities of the early aboriginal inhabitants of the Tomsui area. Early 17th century Chinese literature points out that during the late 1550s of the Ming Dynasty, the aboriginals traded deerskins with the natives of China's Fujian province for goods such as agate, porcelain, and salt. One of the priests noted the word katios often spoken by the aboriginals. So the survivors called the aboriginals katios. The pronunciation of katios resembles that of katu in the language of the Meisei tribe who lived in the vicinity of today's Taipei. In the Meisei language, katu meant walk. The survivors also heard about a small port further down in the south. Two or three small Chinese boats traded deerskins there. This small port would most likely be Bangka, which nowadays is called Wanhua in today's Taipei. Conclusion, Imagination as History Given what we know from the evidence today, the story of the Portuguese sailing past the Taiwan Strait in the 1540s, looking at the beauty of the island Taiwan, and calling the island Formosa, must be the figment of someone's imagination. 
The descriptions in the records of the 1582 shipwreck prove that Portugal was the first Western country to land on Taiwan. In 1996, the government of Portugal issued a set of beautiful coins to commemorate the discovery of Taiwan. They named this set the Discovery of Formosa. The coins had four classes, platinum, gold, sterling silver, and copper nickel. An image of the island Taiwan and the words Taiwan and I Formosa are clearly shown on one face of the coin. Additionally, the year 1582 is clearly imprinted on the coin, not the 1540s.